All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. See lots of you guys out there with, with us today, so we're so happy to have you. And so uh, my name's Abby. I'm a community specialist with Get Response, and I want to thank you all for joining us today. I am thrilled to introduce our host today, DJ Waldo. You may know him as an author, speaker, blogger, podcaster. Uh, he's also the uh, formal, uh, former digital marketing evangelist at Marketo. And so he is going to talk to us and totally educate us on all things human and how to create some really awesome and engaging emails. So I'm so happy for you guys to join us. There's lots of you out there, and so we're really excited. And we're going to have a question and answer time at the end of our webinar, but please feel free to reach out uh, with any questions or comments during the webinar as well, and DJ can get to them uh, as he's able to. So uh, welcome, everyone. And with that said, I will hand it off to DJ. All righty. Hello, everyone. Can you all see me and hear me? Hi. Hopefully it's not too distracting with having the video of in uh, Northern California, so that's the background is my kitchen. It's lovely, I know. Um, <laughs> so hello everyone. I know some of you are also in uh, time zones where it's uh, closer to bedtime. Um, for me it is 11 o'clock, and so I'm coffee time, and as you can see, lots of water. Uh, so I wanted to to get started. I'm really excited to to be here today, and thanks to to get response for for allowing me to do this. This is this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Um, I should also tell you, I'm a, uh, I guess, a classic multitasker, so I do see all that chat that is going down in the background. Um, I will do my best to answer questions um, during, if I can, if it's something that's relevant. And uh, otherwise, uh, like we said, we'll answer questions at the end as well. Um, if you do have any kind of technical things, if you have trouble seeing me or hearing me or whatever, you know, let them know in the chat and, and we'll, we'll take care of it from there. Um, okay, so hopefully you're in the right room literally the right virtual room. We're gonna be talking today about being human. I'm gonna talk about the uh, importance of writing more engaging emails and, and more. And I say more because we're also gonna be talking about um, not just email, but other marketing things as well. Look at all the people from all over the country, Poland, Sweden. Uh, I was in Norway early, earlier this year. Okay, so um, I, I, I'm gonna try something. I know for those of you that are on, uh, on Twitter, um, you know, I, I'm gonna to try to use this hashtag, be, M H uh, be more human. So if you'd like to tweet about this during uh, the next hour, that would be great. Use that hashtag B M H be more human. Also, I'm on Twitter as DJ Waldo. It's just literally my full name, D J W A L D O W. Um, I will not be answering those tweets during the webinar, but I will get to them uh, shortly after. Uh, and last thing, I have my dog here somewhere over here. So if you do kind of uh, see or hear her, that's that's what's going on. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's dig right in. Um, 182.9 billion. That number, ladies and gentlemen, is the number of emails in 2013 that were sent and received. 182.9 billion. Yes, that is a lot of email. So first of all, for all these uh, people that say email is dead, it's not. Uh, it is definitely not dying. It is a well, well and alive. And, but, but here's the reality. Of those 182.9 billion emails, lots of them look similar to this. This is the subject line you can see in the top there says account request. This is an email I got from Redwood City. This is the town I live in from the Parks and Rec Department. And it says, thank you, DJ Waldo. Your request for a new customer account has been received. It will be notified by email when your information has been processed. Not really all that human of a communication. And then I got approved. So I was really excited about getting approved. The subject line said new account approval. I really didn't know what account I was getting approved for. And then it just said boring things like you've been approved, use the number created, here's your customer ID, here's your login. And that's it. That's it. So, oh, I should also, just a quick, I see lots of questions about will this be recorded, available for replay. I'm going to save Abby some time. The answer is yes. It will be available for download and replay also. Okay, good. Um, but here's the reality. Lots of these messages that we're getting today, lots of emails and other marketing messages are very just robotic, R2-D2-ish. So it's, it's like somebody hired a robot to answer all of these, uh, all these questions and uh, respond to all the emails. And I'll give you one more example. In fact, this is very timely. My wife literally went to the DMV 
um, this morning. And I assume there's an equivalent in other countries to the Department of Motor Vehicles. It's where you go to get your license. And uh, typically, at least in the United States, it is, I don't know, dare I say one of the <laughs> one of the places that people dread going to the most. I think it's like the dentist and then the DMV are probably a close one in number two. But here's the message I got from the subject line says, your DMV account has been created. I got an email from the from name was online dash do dash not dash reply. That was the from name. So that's the start of this wonderful relationship with the DMV. And there's some sarcasm in there. Um, and then it said, oh, here's how to access your account. You can go to all these, look at all these different bullet points. Nothing is clickable, nothing I can link to. It's just a bunch of bullet points. And then, but if I have questions, never fear, I can always email them to support. And so, wow, not again, really that human. And then this is my favorite part about these types of emails. This email was sent from an unintended mailbox. Do not respond using the reply button. But don't worry, they'll never reply, ask for any personal information via email. So this is another example of an email I, I got recently. And I have, anytime you see the four X's there, I'm just protecting the guilty in this case. The subject line of this email said, reminder, please share your views with us about name of the company. And the from name, the from name, who this email was from was the name of the company dash do not reply, all caps. They were telling me in the from name, they didn't want me to reply. Maybe in catching the irony here, they're asking me to share my views. They're asking me to do a survey, and they're telling me in the from name, do not reply. So this is the email you open it up. It's it was really nice, and I've I've again kind of blurred out there uh, some of the the names to make sure that uh, I'm protecting the guilty. But if you've ever stayed in Las Vegas, you might be able to figure this out. And it says, tell us about your stay. We've noticed you have the opportunity to share your feedback and rate your experience. It's actually a pretty good email. But it said, do not reply. The final example I want to give you, um, this is the subject line of an email I got recently. It said, service inquiry 77229-775 Lakeview Way-RWC. That's the subject line of the email. Um, of course, now you all know where I live because that's my address in Redwood City. But it's it's crazy, right? I mean, this is the kind of emails that we're getting now in our inbox. Are, are lots of those 182.9 billion emails look something like this? It's it's not human, right? It is as not human as possible. And so, you know, I, I think this is the problem we run to when it comes to email. And I saw um, I saw somebody has a question right there, Debbie, about you know keep all emails very short. I'm happy to address that a little bit later too, but the short answer to that is keep the email as long as you want, as short as you want. There's no rules out there. You know, people, a lot of these rules are are based on what has worked for somebody's particular audience. Do whatever works for you. Test it and see if a short email works better for you or a longer email. A short subject line, a longer subject line. There are really no rules when it comes to how long your email should be. Um, I've had success personally writing longer emails. I've had success writing shorter emails. Um, the key and what I want to talk about today is the more you can make your emails human, the more likely people are to engage with them. And so uh, this is a quote from a good friend of mine, Brian Kramer, uh, and you can feel free to retweet this or write it out just as it is, as it is and copy Brian Kramer on that tweet. Um, but he said, I don't care what language you speak, who your brand is, or what message you're sending. We all need to speak more human. So leave that up for a second there. I don't care what language you speak, who your brand is, or what, your me or what message you're sending. We all need to speak more human. So feel free to share that on, on Twitter also. Um, but this is, this, is, this is the heart of what I want to talk about today, is that other piece of this is we all need to speak more human. And in fact, Brian, just a quick plug for him, he actually wrote a book called There Is No B2B and B2C. It's all about human to human. And I literally have my human to human hat. So that's kind of Brian's hashtag H to H. So um, I want you to think about that as we go through this, uh, this presentation today, the idea of being more human 
more human to human communications. And again, Brian would love it if you tweet at him at Brian Kramer and use that hashtag. I'm sure he would be absolutely thrilled. Um, I want to address two different questions I see in there that I, I just, I told you, I get distracted easily. I'm looking at the, the Q and A, but um, somebody says I was told to always add a PS. You know, my general take is there's no always do what you think is best. Try it. See if it works for your audience. PS sometimes does. Um, and also, as far as putting a short video in my newsletter, um, I, I totally agree with whoever responded from Get Response. You can. There are some email clients that allow video directly in an email. I always recommend instead of putting embedding it. Uh, I always recommend just putting a still shot and a link to that video. Um, there you go. Add a link and a web form and landing page. Perfect. All right. Uh, okay, but here's the question, right? It's easy for me to sit here from, from uh, Redwood City, California and say, be more human, add more human to your communications. But the reality is, and, and the question that we're all going to answer today is, how and more specifically, where do you speak more human? So what I want to share with you today are nine different areas. And I know this is, uh, a lot of this has to do with email. So we're going to be a heavy lean on email, but I want to talk about some other areas you can be more human to. So we'll cover all nine of these today. Um, so I want to first start with, and this is going to be a, a big portion of this, is, is email, specifically the subject line and then the copy of the email. So there's been some controversy around the company Upworthy. Um, sometimes they tend to do very clickbait-ish uh, headlines and subject lines, but I just think they're amazing. I think they do an incredible job. They do a ton of testing. This is what my inbox looked like at one point from Upward. These are the different subject lines. And just take a look at all these different subject lines. I mean, they jump out at you right away. And to me, they just scream human. Uh, it's not a stodgy, you know, uh, uh, do not reply type email or anything like that. It is very much uh, a human type communication. And so I want to pull one of those out in particular. This is one of my favorites. Some creepy dude said some creepy things to this reporter, so she is calling them out. I mean, if that email stands out in your inbox, or you see that email in your inbox, you are way more likely to open it. Now, if creepy dudes is not some a language that you speak, then you might not, but that's not the audience they're going for. They're going for people who are more likely to open this sort of thing. But to me, that's a very, very human message. If you subscribe to get Upworthy emails, or the Upworthiest, I think, is their newsletter, this is the subject line that you get in their email. At least this was when I opted in. It's I'm curious if it's still the case. It says, welcome to the Upworthiest. Turn on your images and buckle your seatbelt. As opposed to just welcome or thanks for signing up or whatever the case is, look at this subject line. That is human. That jumps out at you right away. I also like about this is this idea of turn on your images. They're telling you right away, um, for those that do a lot of email marketing, you know that images often are turned off by default. And you can't, you know, for their emails, as you're about to see, images are really important. And so they're encouraging you right away in the subject line to turn on your images. Um, I want to pause for a second. There's a, there's a couple great questions in there. Um, I just want to address really quickly. Typical open rates, people are talking about conversions you're seeing. Open rates are, can really be all across the board. Kind of the industry average for years has always been this 20% number, um, but that's really, really across the board. Um, Joanne has asked about how many calls to action can you add in one email? As many as you want. I'd recommend having one really strong call to action and a couple secondary calls to action, but you can have as many as you want. There's no rules on that. Um, and then Deborah asks about what about spam filters on the subject line? So as it turns out, uh, most Email clients are not filtering anymore based on content in the subject line, uh, but you certainly want to test that. For the most part, you can put whatever you want in the subject line. You can actually put free. You can put all caps. You can put exclamation points. You got to test and work what works better uh, for your particular audience. Okay, I'll get back to some other questions in a bit, but I want to talk about this Upworthy message in particular. So this is, I'm going to take you through the next couple of screens. This is what the actual Upworthy welcome message looks like. And I just think it's absolutely brilliant. This is, this is exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to um, being more human. So look at this. Already it says, well, hello there. From what we can tell, this is the first email you've opened from us. How do you feel? Because you look great. 
we've got some great news for you. You can feel this great every day. And they talk about some of the different ways you can feel great. In other words, it's the way you feel when you see these. And then they show the four most popular nuggets. And by the way, they, they usually share lots of videos. So these are four different videos that people uh, have shared the most often. Then it says, you want more? Because we got more. You just have to keep opening. So they're already trying to get you in the habit of opening, uh, which I think is a really, really neat also. And then at the end, I won't go through all this, but there's just a fun Q&A. Uh, you know, this is all shiny and cool, but remind me, what am I getting again? And so it's just a nice way of addressing some of those questions in sort of a fun way. But what I really want to focus on for this particular message, the human component, does anybody notice at the very top of that message, it's a little bit hard to see. But I'm going to blow it up for you here in a minute. It says, want to say hi back, reply to this message. So 15 minutes into getting to know me, anybody want to guess what I did when I saw this message? Take a guess. Anybody? That's where you put it in the chat. Nick wins already. I replied. Of course I replied. I want to see if they actually did, right? So this is what I said. I said, just saying hi, holla back if you're human. And I should be clear about something. I am a 38-year-old, so I don't know why I'm actually using the word holla. That's kind of what teenagers and kids use these days. But I don't know. At one point, it just seemed sort of funny to me. So I said, uh, just saying hi, holla back if you're human. Anyone want to guess what they did? Or if they did anything? Yeah. Right. That's their response. They said holla. How awesome is that? I'm sorry if I just blew out a couple people's uh, eardrums on that, but I get excited. This is their response. Holla. Not only did they respond, but they responded with something saying that they clearly read my message. But it's not, it's not over there. I wrote back and I said, of course, you're awesome. Use this in a presentation for Marketo. We'll be using it in our Dreamforce tech. And they wrote back again. Stop. We're blushing. I mean, that is engagement. Guess what? I'm a huge Upworthyus fan. I'm even a bigger fan now, and I talk about them all the time. And it was simple. They just responded to my message. As opposed to online dash do dash not dash reply at dmv.ca.gov, right? Totally opposite. So again, I'm encouraging you not to do this and to do something closer to what Upworthy did. This is also a great example. I thought, uh, you know, you really want to have fun with the reply to address. This is something that Zamanta does. Their reply to address is yes, dash, please, dash, reply. So they're actually telling you to reply in their subject line. A couple others that I thought were really good. This is a company called Vidyard uh, here in the U.S. And uh, their subject line said, gotcha, we know you're not tracking video metrics. And so, you know, they sort of, sort of, calling me out directly in the subject line. And by the way, they're using their own technology, get response. You could do the same thing, right? Where they use their own technology or their email clients technology or email marketer vendors client, blah, 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 email vendors technology to know whether or not you're opening the email. So I think this is kind of a cool way to do this also in that it's not super, it's, it borderlines on creepy. They know you're not, you know, opening emails or tracking, but it does it in a nice way. So here's one that I think is a little bit controversial. And uh, I'm going to go through this. And I want to—I really am interested in your take on what you think about this um, as I go through it. So this was the subject line of an email I got recently. It said, so I'll pick you up at 7. So when you get that message, and I'm curious, go ahead and, and, and uh, put that in the chat. I'm amazed where people are from, New Zealand, Cape Cod, Korea, Bangladesh. Put in the chat down there. Uh, what you would do if you got an email like this or what you would think. Okay, <laughs> lots of lots of creepy, lots of deletes. Um, I'll take a, take a sip while I, uh, sip of water. This is just water, not vodka or anything else. Okay. Oh. Okay, lots of people thinking this is spam, right? It depends on the source, delete. Okay, so here's the source. It was actually from a B2B marketing company. And this is what the actual email looked like. It says, don't make referrals awkward. And how awkward is that, Heidi? And obviously, I'm not Heidi. This was forwarded to me from a, from a coworker. 
Um, we don't even know each other and I'm planning on picking you up. And this is kind of the email. So it comes from a B2B company, right? And, and so lots of you so far have had spam, creepy, threat. Um, there's a couple of you, by the way, that said, uh, you know, where do we go? This is a dating site. Uh, I would open it because I'd be curious. So I'm like Deborah. I opened it because I was curious. But the question is, is this type of subject line creative or deceptive? And you don't need to answer that in the chat because I know based on what you already said that most of you right now feel like it is deceptive. I was kind of mixed on this, but I want to show you some other things about this that, um, and I want to be very clear, I'm not advocating that you do this, but I am advocating that you may want to test this and see if it works for your audience. You also may want to test this on a list of, of your audience who is maybe not as engaged in sort of a last, last chance effort. So what I liked about this email, why I, why I actually kind of think it was closer to creative than deceptive, is the subject line, pick you up at seven, did tie to the header here perfectly. Don't make referrals awkward. That was an awkward first subject line. And then it said, again, how awkward is that? We don't even know each other and I'm planning on picking up. So they played on this idea of, of this pick you up at seven. Um, and, and Dan, I will get back to your point. Dan says the real problem is that people will hit the spam button. The next thing you know, your delivery, delivery rates drop. That is very possible. And that's why you have to be careful doing things like this. Um, but it does tie to the message. And then they go through, and a nice part in the center, we know that nothing beats referrals from happy customers. They've got, uh, you know, somebody asked earlier about how many calls to action. In this case, they have two calls to action here, but they really want you to hit that two-minute demo, dem, uh, two demo link. That's kind of their main call to action. And then they, they, they hit you again right here, watch the demo, right? So that's, and then look at the PS too. Did you see the PS from Jim Williams? PS, I'm actually busy tonight, so can't make it. Maybe another time. So... I don't know. Look at you. Look at that, and and sure, potential deceptive. I think you could also argue that it's creative. But I asked Jim. I emailed Jim directly, and I said, "Can you tell me more about this particular campaign? How did it work?" And I wanted to be clear. There's some things I didn't know. I didn't know how old the list is. Uh, I didn't tell me the age of the list or the type of list. Again, I, I'd recommend if you're going to do something like this, usually do it to an older list that's not as engaged. Try to mention again. Um, I don't know when it was sent or the time it was sent. And I don't necessarily know how the metrics I'm about to show you compare to the averages. So, so keep in mind, there's lots of unknowns uh, as we go into this. But this is what they share with me. The open rate for this particular campaign was 24.4. And if you think about, uh, you know, if you think about the average, I guess so the average is around 20. That's a decent open rate. Now, that's not a great open rate if your, your stats are normally 50%. Uh, it is a great open rate if this is a, a quote-unquote dead list or a dying list. Click rate was 2.1%. That's not great. And the click to open rate was 9%. That means of those that opened the email, 9% uh, actually clicked. And that's not great either. You know, you should have numbers should be at least in the double digits. And the opt-out rate was pretty high. I mean, almost 2%. But again, if this is an old list, if this is people who were going to opt out anyways, who were kind of dead to the world, it's not terrible. Um, but the key is, in the first week, they created seven new opportunities. So for Jim, when I asked him, I said, was this worth it for you? He said, heck yeah, definitely was. That was their goal. Um, but as somebody else mentioned earlier, uh, I think, uh, uh, I can't remember who it was. I don't see the whole chat. But somebody mentioned, you have to be careful with this because if enough people hit spam, it could affect not only your deliverability for that email, but deliverability from all emails. So you do have to be careful with this. But then... Jim shared something else with me I thought was really interesting. He said, this is anecdotal because people responded. You don't know what people are saying behind the scenes necessarily. But he said the positive feedback outweighed the negative feedback by 10, 10 times. So here are some of the emails that he got. Good email, a little long, but the best one I've received in a long time. Good subject line, Jim, got me to open the email. So people are responding back to him. Your email, and then here's one. Your email is deceptive and you should never begin a marketing email with a dishonest subject line. Do you really expect to have a meaningful relationship that has started with a lie? So I think that's probably what a lot of you <laughs> may have responded back to Jim based on your initial uh, take on, on this being deceptive. But this is my favorite one. Ridiculous. Totally deceptive. I had no idea what you were talking about. 
but oh so effective. Excellent way to catch my attention. You win. Tell me more. So to me, that's the heart of it. Now, was it worth it? I'm curious, have any of you, based on what I just showed you now, changed your mind? I don't want to hear from everybody, but just the people who wrote deceptive. Any of you change your mind now and would say, hmm, creative now. Maybe I think it's more creative. Okay, so a couple of you. And again, I'm not here to I'm not here to try to change your mind about it. What I'm trying to say is this is something that may be worth testing to your particular audience. It may be worth testing to an older list. And if guess what? If you still think this is deceptive, then again, I'm not advocating for this, but it may be something worth trying. And as, as Sean said, it, it may not be the wor worth the risk of having your emails delivered. Um, so, and also you have to be very clear about this too. And, and I'm not an attorney, um, but you may want to check with you know, some of your legal department about this, uh, get response. I'm sure it could help. Also, the Can't Spam Act of 2003 says don't use deceptive subject lines. The subject line must accurately reflect the content of the message. Now, I'd argue it does accurately reflect the content of the message, but at the same time, it's sort of a gray area, right? So just, just be careful with something like this. Okay, so let's move on. I want to show you another example. This is a, a, a B2B company that uh, that I thought was a, they actually, you know, one of the hard parts about this is how do you test human? How do you test, like, does sending a human email actually work? Well, this is, this is a group that did it. So this is what their emails used to look like, right? This is one example. Uh, the subject line said, checklist, take stock of your document imaging solution. You can see they've got, you know, two different, one, one call to action uh, with two different links, two different ways of it. But it's sort of a, it's an okay email, kind of boring, not much. And when you click on the link, it does go to a document imaging checklist, but it's not really that interactive. You can, you know, have to print this out. It's not all that fun. So they sent this email. They looked at their metrics, and they got a 9.9% .9 open rate and a 4.4% click to open rate. Not that good. I mean, less than 10%, and a click to open rate. Of the people that opened, less than 5% actually clicked on a link. Not really great metrics at all. Then they did this. Same idea. They changed it instead of a checklist, they did a comic strip. The copy was a lot shorter. And they had one call to action. Somebody asked earlier how many calls to action you have. Again, you can have as many as you want. In this case, they chose to do one. Now they might have wanted to do a button versus a link, but 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 stick with me for a minute. When you click through, this is where you went. You actually went to a landing page that had a cartoon. A little more fun than a checklist, right? Who would want who wouldn't want to see a cartoon? It's short, sweet, to the point. This particular email had a 19.7% open rate and a 40.7% click to open rate. Pretty big difference. If you now compare those two, it was almost a two times or greater than two times percent. Two <laughs> percent. I need more coffee. Give me a second. Okay, the open rate was greater than two two times that of the first one. And the click to open rate, which I would argue is more important than the open rate, this is the people actually taking action and doing something on your with your email, not just not just opening it. That was forty percent, about four times higher. So there's one case study. Now, does it work for your audience? I don't know. You got to test it. Okay, so that's kind of email subject lines and copy. We're going to talk a little bit more. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about email later on. But I want to show some other types of marketing that uh, I think can be more human. So um, landing pages is one. So I came across this example I really loved. This is at the bottom of an email. Ryan Solutions, you know, sometimes, and I, and, and I, I should ask the folks that get response, you, you may have this opportunity to, a lot of, of email providers do this, where at the bottom it'll say powered by. And so, this powered by, you know, has a, has a little link at the bottom, and you know, sometimes. Um, oh, sorry, somebody's telling me my math is correct is incorrect. Sorry, <laughs> ten times higher. All right, you know, I've given this presentation before, and nobody's ever told me that, so I appreciate that. I've never been good at math, so apologies. Either way, it's good, right? It's a lot. It's a lot higher. Um, okay, so if you look at the footer there, this is kind of interesting. You know, who clicks on those footers? Does anybody actually click on that? 
Well, guess what? If you click on that for, for this, Powered by Ryan Solutions, this is what they do. They send you to a page that says, Welcome Footer Link Clickers. They actually have a dedicated page to those people that click on the footer. What most people do is they click on and it goes right to the home page or whatever, as opposed to actually going to a dedicated page. So I know it's hard to see, and and again, you'll get these slides, so you can read it later, but you know, it, I highlight a couple things here. We're glad you gave our logo a click, and then it tells a little bit about what Ryan Solutions does. And the middle part in there, it says, when resorts use information they know about a guest, they can stop sending much irrelevant stuff and send messages that are actually useful to you. And so the very end, it says, thanks for stopping by. From here, you're welcome to poke around our site to learn more. If you've got bigger fish to fry, we hope you have a great day. It's just a fun human message, right? I just love this. And I asked the guy, Greg Blanchard, who's the communications director at, at Ryan Solutions, and, and he basically said, I mean, I realized that all this traffic came from the footer, and that's a different audience. We need to speak differently to that audience versus people who just come to our website. And then I said to him, too, like, you know, how much of your, your marketing content is human? And he said, 95% has a human touch. And to be fair, 95% that they do is of their marketing is in person or on the phone. So it does make sense. But I'll show you some other examples of human from Ryan Solutions. And I won't read all of these, but, you know, some of my favorites are, um, these are actual uh, copy of actual text. Uh, sorry, this is the actual text from emails that they send. So I like this one. My pasty white skin and permanent chill has me craving some sunshine, the beach, and a cold drink. Or the bone at the bottom, more than 50% open rates. Girl Scouts selling thin mints door to door don't even get those numbers. Although I would argue a Girl Scout coming to my door with thin mints is 100% rate. Uh, we love those things. <laughs> I don't know if you have those overseas, but, but man, thin mints are the best. Um, so... I just think this is a cool way. This is some good examples from Ryan Solutions. Does it work for your particular audience? Again, I don't know. You got to try it out. And I'm sorry for those of you that are hungry right now. I'm thinking about Thin Mints too for what it's worth. So then I want to talk about something else as far as landing pages. One of my favorites, the 404 page or the this page does not exist. And what most 404 pages look like are... Your standard, if you do nothing, it looks kind of like this, right? Try again, click the back button, click search. This is what it looks like in Internet Explorer if you change nothing. Instead of that, what a page like this, 404. This is a picture of people sitting around a conference table with horses on their head. If you're saying right now I don't get it, I don't get it either. But it did make me stop and pause, right? Um, this is a buddy of mine, Jason, uh, his last name is Surfer App, and before you get confused, he's actually somebody who has an amazing marketer. He has sold his last name, believe it or not. He also used to sell, uh, some, do something called uh, uh, I, uh, I Wear Your Shirt, where he, so he wore a different shirt every day for a year and sold the rights to that. But look at, his, look at this. This is a lot more interesting. You found error. Sumo Jason is not happy, and that's literally Jason um, dressed up in a sumo costume. And then this is one, this is from a company in the United States here uh, called, um, called Ibex. So they're located in Vermont. And they said, 404 not found. Have you strayed? Need a break? Time for an impromptu dance party. And what's really cool about this, these are actually employees. So they sell, uh, they sell wool clothing. These are actually two of their employees who were just kind of like goofing around one day and they took a picture of them. And this is now their uh, 404 page. And you can see at the bottom there, there's a link that says Dance Party Over. You return to ibex.com. And so it's cool, too, is they can track this, how many people come. It just makes their brand be more human. Um, and so that's kind of it with the 404 stuff. Okay, videos. Oh, my God. So much opportunity with video. Um, I'm just curious. In the chat right there, how many of you are doing video in, in any of your marketing or specifically in email marketing? How many are including some video? Okay, I'm going to kind of let that roll as you're going through. If you're not, start tomorrow. Video makes you more human. Don't worry about your video being perfect. Don't worry about it being the best looking video. For those of you that have devices like this, oh, there's a text from my wife. Sorry. Um, for <laughs> those of you that are, you know, it's okay. It's okay. The video on this is absolutely amazing. And this is just the five, the six, and the Samsung videos are. are Absolutely incredible. Don't be afraid of video. If you don't like about how you look on video, 
either A, get over that fear or have somebody else in your company do it. Um, so, and Serena, thank you. It's the only way I know how to be as human. Watch video. Okay, so um, I, I'm not going to actually show you this video. This is, um, this is another campaign that a, a B2, B2B marketer did that I think is really good. Um, they talk about a tale of two marketers and they show this great video. And at the end of the video, they come to a landing page. And the landing page is where they want to collect your information. So you can download the case study, first name, last name, all this interesting stuff, right? Cool about this though, they actually tracked the um, they tracked the stats. So after seven days, they had a thousand visitors to the campaign, 78% click-through rate on the video. Um, they had a 72% completion rate, 90% of viewers watched the video beyond 10 seconds watch to the very end. So, you know, some pretty compelling stats here. They also had a really high conversion rate and all. And, and I won't go through the details of this, but the bottom line is, if you can track it even better, video has proven itself to be effective and it is a great opportunity to be more human. Okay, I want to talk about a couple other things here, uh, specifically around email signatures. So, for those that have an iPhone, um, most iPhones, I think all iPhones, the default email signature says sent from my iPhone. So my wife's iPhone <laughs> signature looks like I've been trying to encourage her for years to change it. It's kind of boring, right? Eh, sent from my iPhone, okay. It's, it's advertising for Apple, right? That's about it. This is what my signature looks like. Um, I say currently to discovering my passion. I have a link to actually view that blog post. Um, I tell people where they can find me, and then I do this funny hashtag of where I send it from. So it might say hashtag MacBook Air, hashtag iPhone. Um, this is somebody, a friend of mine says, sent from my iPhone, which I've named George 2. It's a little more human. I've actually replied back to George 2 before. And uh, this is one of my favorites. This is sent from my iPhone. Rest assured that any typos, spellos, or other examples of fat finger syndrome are due to the device and should in no way impact your perception of the consideration that this message was given. Or this one, my Urfram. Sorry for any arrows, typos. So uh, I've got a link there when, when we send out these slides, you can see it. There's lots of other funny email signatures, but the point is do something that's a little unique and a little different. Um, this is my buddy, Tim McDonald. He's got a lot of stuff in his signature. I would argue probably too much stuff, but he has at the bottom there, I don't know if any of you are Tina Fey fans, um, and I'm not gonna show this. This is actually an anime GIF, so it'll show up in your, in your email. Um, but I'm not going to show it because we've had some issues with the, the delays, but it's, it's actually Tina Fey giving herself a high five like this. I'll just reenact it for you. How's that? Yay. So um, just unique, funny, different. So that's what it looked like. Um, out of office autoresponders. This to me is a huge opportunity to be more human. Most out of office autoresponders look like this. Hello, thanks for email. I'm at such and such event. I'm returning on this date. My response will be delayed. Or I'm on PTO. I don't have access to email. If urgent, you know, contact me here. Now, again, maybe this is different in, <laughs> in other countries, but in the United States, especially because of these devices, how many times have you gotten this email from somebody saying they're out of the office and then, I don't know, five minutes later they respond to you? It's because people carry these things around with them everywhere, and they're always, um, they always have, uh, they're always responding to email. We're addicted to email. And so I think it's a little more fun to do something like this. This was my out of office message for, from a while ago. It says, I've been preaching this idea of being more human, and here's my out of office. I created a video just for you. So I actually created an out of office video. And again, I'm not gonna show you the details. It's linked there, and we can link it up maybe in the chat below. Um, and also it'll be in the slides, but I did like a two minute video and said, I'm out of the office. This is what I'm doing. So instead of you just reading it, you could actually watch the video. Again, it, it, it was more human. It was more engaging, much like we're doing today. You can see my face, right? You can see me waving. You can see my kitchen. This is me being more human. And I think you have an opportunity in a, in a out of office message to do that too. Um, I'm not going to go through all these. You can, you can look at these on your own time. But these are some friends of mine. You know, people now send me all their out-of-office messages. And there's some really, really funny ones. I mean, this is a you know, friend of mine who was, who was in France and Amsterdam. And I know some of you today are from Amsterdam. And you know, he talked about, and this was his subject line, we, we. And uh, you know, he does talk about, if you go through there, here's, here's some other places that you can find. 
Um, here's one from the North Pole, you know, a joke that they're out until uh, Christmas time through the holidays. Um, my friend Ann Handley from Marketing Press, the best writers ever. You know, she hers is hilarious. Uh, this person, John Jantz, he was kayaking, so his subject line said, "My kayak doesn't get email." I encourage you to do something like that. I also, from a from this is more on a personal side, but on a marketer side, you know, when you send out that email, and I'm I'm sure you that manage email for your company, you get, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of out of offices. What about? What about, and I've yet to have anybody follow up on this. I really want one of you. There's like hundreds of people on this webinar right now. I want somebody in here to do it and then report back to me. Hit reply on one of those out of office emails. Literally hit reply. And if somebody says in their out of office message, uh, you know, I'm on, I'm on my honeymoon or I just got married or I'm, I'm on maternity leave, reply back and say, hope you had a great honeymoon or sorry we missed you or do something that indicates that I don't know, do something that's kind of a little bit unique and different. And and I, you know, it's not going to work with everybody, but just have fun with it. Just try. Um, by the way, I, I know we kind of had this scheduled to, for 45 minutes and then Q&A. Feel free to answer. I've got a little bit more material in here I want to share you. So so feel free to ask your questions in the chat below and I'll keep kind of getting them as, as we go, um, if that works. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about LinkedIn profiles. Oh, cool. this is so <laughs> Conan O'Brien actually has a LinkedIn profile. It's a real one. You can follow him. LinkedIn.com slash in slash Conan O'Brien. And I realize not everybody's Conan O'Brien, but uh, look at his look at his LinkedIn profile. I mean, pictures of past presidents next next to him. Education. He says yes. Uh, you know, independent. You know, blood test scores. He shows his blood blood pressure. So, but again, not everybody can be Conan O'Brien. So this is actually a real human being, Becky Scarborough. And uh, what I like about Becky's LinkedIn profile is look what she puts up here. Instead of a, a basic description, uh, it says, kind of awesome at marketing automation and demand gen stuff. Education, wicked smart. And then things that she's done, look at what she says here. New lead generation process, check. Rethinking the way company generates demand, you bet. So she's doing something that is a little bit unique and different. And I really like that in a LinkedIn profile. Okay, and let's talk about a couple other things. Email opt-out landing pages. So typical opt-out landing pages are, are actually not even creative. It just says you've been unsubscribed or maybe we do that. Um, in this case, this company, JibJab, made it a little more interesting. They said, you've been on unsubscribe, and they said sad face, but still pretty basic. This one says, unsubscribe, don't give up on us. And then they give you some options about maybe you want to get different emails from them and change your frequency. But this is an example I want to show you with a, a landing page, an opt-out, that um, – Actually, they show some good metrics on. They've tested this. So Bonobos is a, pant, a company that does, sells mostly men's slacks in the United States. I think probably worldwide as well uh, because they're online. So when you go to opt out, it says, how much Bonobos do you want in your life? And I know it's sort of hard to see, so I can show you this. Your options are, how about once a week? Let's take it slow, Bonobos. Once a month, I like you, Bonobos. Like. It's not you. It's me, Bonobos. I need a 30-day break. Unsubscribe, sniff. It's over, Bonobos. And so they give you all these different options. It's very, very human. And the company they're working with to, to, with this form, these are the stats they gave. The above form, Bonobos has consistently saved 25% of those opt-out bound subscribers, converting them into a lower cadence frequency, combined with other, other, combined with other efforts, including frequency modeling, Bonobos was able to reduce attrition by 86%. It's pretty cool. So this is an option. This is something you uh, you can you can test. I want to get to a couple questions here real quick. Um, someone asked, who gets to decide the email is creative or deceptive? It's the subscriber, sender, or the auto responder. I mean, I guess the answer to that is, you know, the the person that opens your email, your audience always determines whether your message is good, bad, creative, deceptive. So this is why you have to kind of test it with your audience. Um, and then. Uh, Abby asked an answer. Uh, somebody, oh, Serena, you asked a question directly to Abby. Looks like you got that covered. Uh, Ali asks, I have 
160,000 subscribers who didn't click on a confirmation or didn't even receive confirmation email and some of them are invalid. What are your idea about the issue? What can I do? So my general take on that, I am, I've written about this before. I am not an advocate for confirmation emails or double opt-in emails. I think the problem is that's exactly what can happen. They get lost. People don't click on them. And then you've got these people sitting in what I would call uh, email confirmation purgatory. Uh, so what can you do? You can, well, this is a question probably for get response on how they would want you to handle that. Uh, but, you know, so, so I'll, I'll let, I'll let the folks that get response answer that. My, my take would be either they're either dead in the water or maybe you could, you know, email them one more time asking them to opt in. But again, I'll let the, I'll let the experts answer that one. Um, so I'm going to talk about two more things real quick. I know we're running out of time. Uh, confirmation emails. So, um, this is something that I bought, uh, I guess a couple years ago now, I bought, uh, you can see I'm a Michigan, University of Michigan fan. Actually, I actually have a Michigan tattoo right there. And I ordered this t-shirt for my daughter. And this is the confirmation email that I got. You know, pretty standard, pretty boring, doesn't really tell me a lot, you know, but that's typical. Compared to this, if anybody's ever seen this, this is from Derek Sivers, the president of CD Baby. I'm going to read this to you because it is just that awesome. This is after you order a CD from CD Baby. Your CDs have been gently taken from our CD Baby shelves with sterilized, contamination-free gloves and placed onto a satin pillow. A team of 50 employees inspected your CDs and polished them to make sure they are in the best possible condition before mailing. Our packaging specialist from Japan lit a candle and a hush fell over the crowd as he put your CDs in the finest gold line box that money can buy. We all had a wonderful celebration afterwards, and the whole party marched down the street to the post office where the entire town of Portland waved bon voyage to your package on its way to you in our private CD Baby jet on this day, Sunday, November 18. I hope you had a wonderful day shopping at CD Baby. We sure did. Your pictures on our wall as customer of the year. We're exhausted, but we can't wait for you to come back to CDBaby.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sigh, Derek Sivers, president, CD Baby. Pretty freaking awesome. Am I right or am I right? Amazing. That is a confirmation email. So if any of you out there are retailers, do something like this. Make it fun. Make it more human. I want to close out today by talking a little bit about social media. This is something that happened to me recently, um, and, and I want to show you some examples of how you can actually be more human on social too. And, and these, by the way, examples I'm giving are, are big brands that are doing this. So there's a company, uh, uh, I think they're just in the United States, called Eat24. They, they uh, facilitate uh, ordering food, and they're integrated with sites like Yelp and other things like that. Um, so I was giving a webinar talking about Eat24, and this woman who I don't know, Annette Holland, at Eat24 is getting a shout-out on this particular web webinar. The copy editors are hilarious. And so I wrote back, and I said, a well-earned shout-out. And Eat24, not surprisingly, writes back, shout-out on Shoutlet makes us giggle a little bit. Thanks for the heads up and all the love. And then I wrote back and I said, just notice for what it's worth, I was sharing typo 24 email, very human. And they said, wait, there were typos in that email? <laughs> so really, really good. It's just a really human exchange. And, and I put in the, you know, when you get these slides, you can see the full exchange on Twitter. It's, it's public. You can see everything. Um, just an amazing, amazing conversation with E24. And actually, at one point, I even did... I recorded a video from this very kitchen and sent it back to E24. They recorded a video. I mean, just really, really cool, fun stuff. If you want to see what a creative email looks like, sign up for E24. They do a weekend coupon every Friday. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, another example, this is from Instagram. And so uh, I'll, bore you the, it won't, I'll save the details, but New Belgium is a, a brewer, one of my favorite brewers. Uh, they're based in Colorado. Um, for several reasons. One, I'm trying to get in shape, but I'm drinking beer for the next couple months. Now, what you can't see is I actually have a case of beer sitting over there, but I'm waiting for 90 days until I drink beer again. So I'm, I'm you know, I don't know, two months in right now. And so I still follow him on Instagram and I wrote something like, I may need to unfollow you. It's not that I don't love you. In fact, I have a case of beer camp sitting on my counter. That's the one over there. And anyways, I wrote to New Belgium on their, on their uh, Instagram account. They wrote back. You can kind of see it. Oh, look, I can use this. I'm going to circle this, see if this actually works. Whee! Right? First off, we totally understand. However, temptation can be one hell of a motivator. Secondly, more power to you, brother. We'll wait to hear from you in the finished line. So they responded in just a very, very way. Pretty cool. And then the conversation carried over to Twitter. 
Um, here I am trying to think about beer for the next 78 days. Now you guys are talking about on Twitter too. And then New Belgium says, talking about what? This? Um, and then they posted a link back to a picture of beer. Just really funny, engaging stuff. And very, very human. So I'm going to close out with a couple other things here. I want to remind you, you know, I don't care what language you speak, who your brand is, or what your message you're sending. We all need to speak more human. So Brian Kramer would probably be forever indebted to you if you were to tweet something like that or at least say, hey, at Brian Kramer, uh, DJ's talking about, you know, human to human stuff. And you can even use this hashtag, H2H. So does human work for every company, for every brand? My answer to that, I think it does. I really, really, truly think it does. I don't care what industry you're in. I really think it does. However, test it. You have to see if it works for your audience. I don't know your audience. You hopefully know your audience better than anybody else. So test it for your audience and then report back. And we'll leave you with one last thing. Um, I blurred out the right side of this page because this is not my page, but I think this is the best way to end this webinar. I'm asking you all to just kick ass and be human. That would make me happy. It would make your customers happy. So thank you very much. I'm happy to stick around for a few more minutes if folks want to ask questions. Abby, I guess that's up to you in the get response team. I'm happy to sit here. I'm just drinking water. Again, not vodka, just water. I could answer some questions if people have more questions. Sure. Thanks, Jay. I think uh, there was a question earlier. Uh, that Debbie is asking for a response to. So, uh, I read so much stuff on a smartphone three inches wide. Emails that run across the full page give me an ugh. <laughs> this is going to be a chore feeling. I notice many more of the hip marketers are keeping the emails very narrow. So, he's asking about your thoughts on the width of an email. Yeah. So, um, and Abby, I'll let you guys address this from a get response standpoint, but lots of email providers now are, are giving you the opportunity to do uh, what's called responsive design. So you do it on a website. What that means is as you shrink the website, it optimizes for different devices. Email, you can do that for sometimes. It's a little trickier with email. Um, lots of times you can make it mobile responsive, but the email client has to know who's reading the email. So I can tell you like for my emails, when I send my emails out, they are mobile responsive and they do kind of shrink down to the right format, but it doesn't always work. Um, even, and then this is not, this is not like a get response uh, issue. You know, you all might have it figured out, but sometimes email clients get a little wonky with it. So if you want to avoid that entirely, yes, shorter copy, uh, bigger font, uh, you know, I definitely would encourage you to do something like that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, make, make your mess. I mean, let's, let's be, let's be honest. People are reading on these devices. So do, do your best to, uh, you know, to, to, to do that. To do that. What does it mean? Oh, it makes sense. oh I'm talking about helping, oh, keeping desktop emails now. Sorry, Jason. Yeah. L let me, let me add to that. Um, yes, you can do that too. You know, this is something you can test though, Jason and everybody else. Like I, I can't tell you what's going to work for your audience. Uh, test it. You know, send half your list an email that is, uh, you know, narrower and half that's wider, and and see what works best for you. You know, you know, do you get more clicks? Do you get a better click to open rate on the narrow ones versus the wide ones? You know, test it out. Oh, I think somebody's asked this question a couple of times, Mark. So I want to answer this for you. Can uh, you have too many links in your email that affect deliverability? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to let get response, the delivery folks ask, answer that. I can tell you, I used to be a deliverability guy too, um, back in the day for another company. The answer is generally no. Um, I, I mean, spam filters are not really looking for links like, like that anymore. They're not looking for a sort of thing. Uh, that being said, you know, you can, again, I, I've never seen an email client that has rejected an email or marked as spam based on number of links. So I think Abby is is given some uh, you know uh, an email there you can send people to. So I think we're wrapping up here in a second, guys. Yeah, 
Yeah, so uh, you guys, if you have any further questions about Get Response, how we're handling deliverability issues, web forms, responsive templates, please get in touch with us. We have uh, live chat 24 7, you know, telephone, email, different departments waiting to help you. And uh, as you guys probably know, DJ is super active on all things social media, and so I'm sure you'll be able to tweet at him or uh, find a way to get in touch if you're looking for more inspirational <laughs> information or human touches from him as well. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. There was a lot of you. You were super active and really had a good time. Uh, I learned a lot as well from DJ, so I'm super thankful uh, for all of you, and especially for DJ for taking this time today. So, thank yes. you all. <laughs> thank you so, so much, guys. Go ahead and close out the session now. Thank you for everything. Please don't be shy. Reach out to us. Have a great rest of your day.